Robbie, uh, I hope you heard uh, what we just went through there very quickly, just among college educated white voters, non college educated white voters. What did you hear? Um, how are you feeling? Well, we're feeling really, really good, Chuck. Uh, some of what you saw there uh, reflects what, what we're calling the Hillary Coalition. Uh, uh, young people, Latinos, Asian Americans, suburban women, they are turning out at very high numbers. Uh, we just saw that Broward County in Florida, a really important Democratic county, already surpassed the 2012 turnout uh, in the 4 o'clock hour. We're seeing Durham, New Hampshire, where a lot of young people are voting from UNH, is uh, well over 80% of the right. 2012 turnout already. So we're, we're very encouraged by what we're seeing, but we're just reminding everyone to get out and vote. You've still have a, a few hours left. Hey, I want to ask you about sort of what we're seeing, I think. The good news for you is the southeast corner of the United States. The tougher it looks like if you have uh, stuff to worry about, it's the Great Lakes region. It, obviously, some of this is migration over the last 15, 16 years. We can explain it with demography. If you look back, do you have any regrets that you didn't get into Michigan sooner in a bigger way? You know, I, I think Donald Trump's campaign might be regretting that they didn't compete harder. Uh, I would argue around the country by building a ground game uh, like like Hillary decided to. Um, but also, you know, competing harder in a state like Michigan. I'm actually really proud that we were organizing in Michigan uh, back in the primary and we never let up. Uh, so we've had a big team on the ground there. We registered over 100,000 mm -hmm. uh, new voters there. We've been working aggressively for months. Uh, you know, we weren't necessarily talking about it in the press, but uh, we've had a concerted effort, and we're seeing, again, in Michigan as well, very good turnout uh, in our core communities All there. Right, fair, fair hit on Trump in Michigan, but let me ask you about one that, that you guys flirted with but then quietly seemed to back off, and now I wonder if you have any regrets, and that's Georgia. You know, we, we've been organizing in Georgia as well since the beginning, just like we were organizing in Arizona. I think Georgia is still a, an uphill climb for this campaign. Um, but uh, we're also seeing strong turnout there. Um, what I'm what I'm particularly encouraged by is those those you know backbone battleground states, Florida, sure. uh, Pennsylvania, Virginia. Those are all looking really really strong right now in terms of turnout in the communities where we need them, and and that's where we're really focused. All right, you left out of state when you talked about your backbone of battlegrounds, and that's Ohio. So let me ask you this: If Hillary Clinton is elected without Ohio, what does that mean for Ohio? Does that mean just the battleground map has changed, that Ohio is just no longer a linchpin? If you can win the presidency without Ohio, an Ohio and an Iowa, for instance. Well, my, my parents live in Ohio, uh, so, I, you know, it's, it's an important so state. So we're going to blame uh, the mooks, right? <laughs> they turned out to vote. I, I, I made sure that they did. No, look, I think Ohio will continue to be a battleground state. One of the luxuries that, that our campaign has right now is that so many states are in play that we have many, many paths to victory. Donald Trump has to win Ohio. He has to win Pennsylvania. He has to win Florida. Um, you know, we, we have a variety of, of different places to go. I'd say Ohio is one of the tougher states for us. Um, but uh, but I, I think it will remain a battleground uh, for a long time to come. And then let's talk about North Carolina. Uh, I feel like a week ago you guys felt great about North Carolina. Over the last few days, I, I can't find a Democrat or a Republican that feels as good as you guys felt a week ago about your chances. And there almost seems as everybody thinks, geez, it's going to be on a knife's edge, but it's probably going to tip to the Republicans. Do you still think that? I think North Carolina is a toss-up. I mean, anybody who hasn't turned out to vote yet in North Carolina should. Their <laughs> vote could literally be the deciding vote. You think it's that um, close? I do. And again, you're seeing this Hillary coalition at work. Uh, strong turnout uh, in African-American counties, particularly once we got those extra early voting sites, right. but also those suburban women in the research triangle, young people in the universities. We had a, an incredible event last night uh, with thousands of people uh, in, at midnight in North Carolina. Um, we know our, our folks are turning out. It is a numbers game. And I think, I don't know that uh, North Carolina will be called tonight. It might be that close. Interesting. That's been, uh, that's been my guess, is that we might call it sometime Thursday. Robbie yeah. Mook, uh, quite the ride for you being a campaign manager, win or lose. Congratulations on making it. Thank you, Chuck. It's been a great experience. Thank you for all your coverage. You got it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.